Good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. I declare this meeting open. Welcome to everybody. Under announcements, uh, my additional mayoral expense for the last month was uh, $63.67 for fuel. I also uh, pass on uh, my congratulations and our congratulations to the City of Bustleton and the State Government for the uh, announcement last weekend with respect to the uh, Bustleton Regional Airport, $60 million investment. It will make a big difference to the whole of the South West, in my view. And, councillors, just a reminder, we have the, uh, the USS Ashland visiting us this weekend and we're having a civic reception for uh, 40 of the ship's company on Saturday evening from 5 until 7. Declarations of interest. I have uh, Councillor Steck declares an interest in a financial interest in 10.4.1 as her partner owns the property. Councillor David Prosser, same item, 10.4.1. It's a financial interest as he is a beneficiary of the Family Trust, which is financially related to City Gate properties who own the property. And Councillor McCleary has declared a proximity interest in item 10.4.2 <coughs> as she is owner of Unit 3, number 3 Mason Street. Are there any further declarations, councillors? Thank you. Uh, responses to questions taken on notice are listed in the agenda. Confirmation of previous minutes. Can I someone move? Councillor McGuell, Councillor Cook, all in favour? Those against, that's carried unanimously, thank you. The uh, advisory um, committee minutes, audit committee, Councillor McGuell, you happy to move that? Second up, Councillor Hayward, all in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you. We have uh, requests for presentations tonight, councillors um, from SPBY Proprietary Limited for uh, Mr Terry Dopper, Mr Peter Hanna and Mr Paul Cotsoglo to speak to item 10.4.1. Those who agree, please indicate. Those who don't, that's... Approved. And we have a uh, request from the MS Society of WA, uh, Mr Marcus Stafford, the CEO, and I understand your town planner wishes to speak as well, Katie from Row Consulting or Row Planning, uh, relating to item 10.4.2. Those who approve that represent those who don't. It's approved. So what we'll do, uh, ladies and gentlemen in the gallery... Uh, we, uh, when we get to your items, I'll invite you to come forward and, and you'll speak um, for a period of no more than five minutes each. For the three speakers from uh, SBPY, you need to speak for ten minutes maximum for the three of you, so you can work out who's speaking. Thank you very much. Councillors, let's deal with... Uh, are there any petitions from anybody? Method of dealing... The items that we need to discuss uh, are 10.2.6, which requires an absolute majority, and I'll be seeking an amendment to that. Item 10.4.1 and item 10.4.2. Are there any others, councillors, that you wish to discuss? Yes. We do indeed. We do indeed. Good call, Councillor McCleary. Councillor Steele, did you have one? Yes, I wish to register my vote to get 10.2.1, vote from the way, 10.2.2, 10.2.3, and 10.4.1. Yes, I'm sorry, 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 I'm sor
Yes. Now I understand that this piece of land is our car park was attached to break at the present time. Um, until we have a um, debt car park underway, are we voting against this? I think it's foresighted that we're actually progressing before anything has done for this. We don't have a good transport system in town already. We're giving away prime land. I know that you'll say we can just park the cars underneath, but that will be for hotel residents. So are we voting against this? And I really do think this should be um, held back until at least we have the car, um, our debt car park underway. Can you record two, that one, please? Sir, could I also ask that when development applications are refused, could they also be um, presented to Council in the form of a report, please? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
man pay a favour drop out on this one? Yeah. Can we just start? I think the best way to do it is this is going to be a brand new um, uh, resolution, uh, Mr. CEO. Or do you want to see it as a three <coughs> of the alternate recommendation? Let's uh, have a move and a second and four. One, two, three, and four. Then we'll select the three councils. Go on there. Tom, you can move that out. Councillor McNeil. Councillor Steele. Sorry, Councillor Steele, second. <coughs> Discussion? Yeah, I'll come out, Councillor McNeil. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Oh, look, we'll just get the. Um, we'll get this one up first and we'll invite the nomination. So, any discussion? I'll put it all in favour. Let's carry the announcement. Okay, we'll have nominations. Councillor Boston nominated Councillor Brown. Councillor Giles. Councillor Giles. I nominate Councillor Steele. Further nominations? to know why in, in our briefing of this, uh, in our notes for this meeting, um, we weren't given uh, the final order uh, from SAT um, 31st October 2014 regarding Rastakana, because we only got this in an email after Councillor McCleary asked a question about cost. So I don't know why that, I want to know why that wasn't in our briefing notes, because that actually contains information that we need for this decision, I believe. Okay. I'll um, arrange for the CEO to liaise with you following the meeting, Councillor Giles, to explain it to you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to defer this item. Uh, bit, take a seat, Councillor Giles. We have a, we've given approval for presentation to happen, so we'll, we'll, we'll listen to them first. Um, so, um, we have Mr Dopper, Mr Hannah, Mr Kotsoglo. Welcome, gentlemen. And I ask that... Uh, Succinct and to the point. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor, uh, councillors and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, firstly, Mr Mayor, with your permission, I'd like to hand out some photographs that would help support my verbal um, presentation. Uh, if you just hand them to uh, Mr Ranson on the end there, he'll take care of that. Are you, Mr... Thank you, Cherry Dupper, yes. Uh, General Manager of Sports Power Australia. We uh, represent 135 outlets across the country and... Um, one of the leaders in the sporting goods industry. Um, part of our growth uh, over the last 12 months, and certainly going forward, will be um, bigger stores in our uh, organisation. 
the bigger footprints are where we need to go to keep up with the trends in sporting goods, as have uh, office works done with stationery and bunnies are done with uh, hardware and so forth. So for us, the bigger scale model is what we need. We can't operate in smaller stores to deliver the story we need to deliver. There's still room for the smaller outlets, but around the country we've identified Towns like Tamworth, Coffs Harbour, uh, Rockhampton, Townsville, um, Mandurah over in the west, uh, Belmont and Alice Springs and it's still growing in some of the suburban regional uh, uh, suburban suburbs in the cities as well. Larger footprint stores where we can showroom proper equipment in the fitness area, particularly in treadmills and home gyms and in the other areas, table tennis tables, beer tables, trampolines. We need to showcase this. And also, too, we need access. We need to be able to, for the customers to drive up to the front door, load them into their cars or trailer and take them away. And we also need rear uh, access as well for deliveries of these items. And to showcase them on the floor, you can see from some of the imagery there, some of the stores that I'm referring to, and the way it's presented in a really showroom manner. In a, uh, and people can try this product, they can get on the treadmills, they can use the home gyms, they can play table tennis. We need to do that. And then a part of that, of course, once we have that customer buying that product and using the product, we need to sell them the ancillary products that go with it, of course. But in this particular store, we've identified Bunbury as one of the leading sporting uh, regional towns in Western Australia, and uh, it's a wonderful city. We know you're open for business. We want to put a brand new store in there. There's actually a, a new model of what we've got with the other 12 stores of, of this size of footprint, and that's with a real show room. Uh, operation of this big ticket items and again if you look at some of the imagery there you'll see how this might come out and you've probably seen the floor plans. We're very excited about it from a national point of view. We want Bunbury to be the very first of this newer style in this bigger um, operation and uh, we are excited to where it might take uh, Bunbury and the consumer here to give them a one-stop shop in a wonderful show showroom operation. <coughs> And I don't appreciate the Perth weather, unfortunately, this morning coming up from Melbourne. I don't know what happened there, but 2.4 2 degrees, very chilly. <laughs> uh, very cold in Melbourne. I was very happy to come up from Melbourne to present our case because, again, uh, this is a national footprint that we want to grow and we want this to be one of the really ideal, fantastic stores and studying in Bunbury will be ideal. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and councillors and ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Peter Hanna. I'm one of the owners of this uh, enterprise. As Terry mentioned, Bunbury's been recognised as the ideal location, uh, location for this type of store. Bunbury's got a very strong history of regional sport and is recognised as the regional sport leader outside of uh, Perth. And uh, we want to be able to service that industry. Um, we're looking at setting up a store with 875 square metres. Um, that's going to employ... 20 people, including two local people who have been selected as managers. Uh, they will manage that operation and the idea is that once the store is set up and running viably, that we can work closely with a lot of the sports clubs in town to help them as well. Um, it's been um, a project that we've had in the uh, pipeline now for about 12 months and that we've been working towards and hopefully we can all come to an agreement and get this project off the ground for the benefit of people in Bunbury and for the clubs in Bunbury. Thank you, Mr Hannah. Mr Kotsoglo. Mr Mayor, Councillors, uh, my name's, and ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul Kotsoglo. I'm Managing Director of Planning Solutions, and thank you for the opportunity to allow us all to speak tonight. Um, this is a new application. It's not the application that was uh, previously presented to the SAT. Um, we came back, we took some instruction, we had some discussions with our client and we said Look, the best way to deal with this is to come and talk to the council rather than having um, lawyers at SAT and wasting money. Um, it's not a waste of money for me, of course. Um, what we did um, was we broke down um, the uses, the floor space areas for the different activities. We've got a range of uses which include warehouse, showroom, and there's a component of retail. The, um, there are other facilities such as service facilities, so if you buy an exercise bike or a weight uh, machine or something like that and it's broken, those things can be fixed. There are also areas for storage. The key and most important consideration 
as I understand it, and I've been involved both in Bunbury planning, um, but also commercially for various landowners, including the landowner at this site, um, is the issue of the apparel, the retail land use. That um, area that is being discussed is between 22 and 25 per cent of the site, um, the, the unit, not the site, not the 10 hectare site, but the 875 square metres. We are looking to get an approval for the types of activities that are shown in the photographs that you see. Importantly, this is a new and unique concept to Western Australia. It is more along the lines of the Kalgoorlie-based larger bulky goods than the Belmont option, which is the apparel. Belmont is located in a town centre zone, part of the Belmont Forum shopping centre, and as anyone that's been there knows, it would be like trying to set up down the road um, at centre point here. It is not the same as a, um, a large format, mixed business, bulky goods area. So our client is looking to propose a very large format retail facility and it provides three levels of service. It provides the econ economic service, the, the mid-range and the exceptionally good product service. So you've got a choice of things without the need to um, go to Mandurah or further north to Perth. We have um, been encouraged by enthusiasm the officers have for the project. We would like to work with the officers and get an approval that is mutually agreeable. We understand that through the mediation process of SAT, we'd end up in that process. We are asking that Council give us either an approval for the proposal as is proposed, or if you're looking for further certainty, um, provide us an instruction to work together with a percentage um, to direct us in the direction that you're after so that we don't have to waste another 50,000 bucks at SAT. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Councillor Charles. Oh, thanks, Paul. Thank you. Can I please move to defer this um, issue for four weeks so in order to put in the council officers can work with the um, proponents to get, come to a satisfactory resolution? Do you want to make it four weeks or two weeks, Councillor Giles? I think. Um, yes, will two be enough? I think it'll be see. enough. Okay, well, two is fine then. So Council Giles moves that we defer this item for two weeks till the next council meeting to enable our officers and the consultants to work together with the owners to come up to a solution with regards to particularly the retail floor space. Yeah, that, I understand that that's probably doable. And I think you'll find that the, um, <coughs> the amount uh, should be uh, no more than 20% of the, of the floor area of the building. Councillor McCleary, you're seconding that? Is there any uh, debate, councillors? There's no debate on that. We're all relaxed about what we're saying. We're all in favour. Those against? One, that's carried. Thank you. So that's the decision. Uh, one round of meetings, and um, the indication is 20% retail space total of the total area of the floor space of the building. OK, we'll wait till our two councillors come back and Councillor McCreary leaves us. Mr Stafford, are you speaking first? Yes, I am. Um, yes, please, come forward. Thank you. Uh, Mr Stafford is the uh, CEO of MS Society and we're dealing with item 10.4.2. Thank you. Mr Mayor, Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I am the CEO of the MS Society here in WA and also South Australia and the Northern Territory. Just for sake of good order, I advise that I'm the chair of the CEO Roundtable for the State and on the Ministerial Advisory Committee for the National Disability Insurance Scheme as well. And I just would like to cover off that we know who we are and we know what we're getting into. And in addition to those things on my CV, I'm also a tremendous advocate for Bunbury. I see this as a, a vibrant jewel for us as a state in the future. And I do that on behalf of my constituents and those people who I'm here to serve. Because if you look at the MS, people with MS and those with other neurological conditions, one of their top stressors is heat intolerance. 
And if you think about Generation Xs, many of whom are about to flood into the retirement market, makes Bunbury a very attractive proposition when you're living in 42 degrees in Perth summer days. So therefore, this presentation I make to you is so important. Who are we? We're a not-for-profit organisation that's been around for over 50 years, but we're also a not-for-loss organisation. We work very carefully to spend our dollars most wisely on behalf of those who we serve. We focus on things like respite and accommodation. We are the greatest funder of research in this country and hold that leadership position. And we also look towards the provision of allied healthcare services for the facility which we're discussing with you this evening. Things like counselling for people who are newly diagnosed and facing the shock and despair of that process so that our counsellors can work with them to help them with their mental health and also to ward off suicidal thoughts and tendencies. Right the way through, occupational health, nursing, up to physiotherapy so that we can actually have people who retain their mobility and quality of life as they enjoy life in Bunbury and the surrounds. And we know what we're doing here. So to give you a sense of where we come from, our Beachborough location, one of our 17 locations, the neighbours stole our garden fence privacy screening and reticulation. There are no complaints on file. If we look at our Rockingham location, we live next door to an auto barn that specialises with big <coughs> hammers and spanners whacking on metal things all day. And on the other side, we have an industrial warehouse. There's also a fairy store there. None of them causes us any problems. We have no complaints on file. If we look within Bunbury, our Treendale location, we were described as crazy for getting into a greenfield site like Treendale. Surely you know there's going to be a Woolworths built opposite and a pub, and there might even be a McDonald's down the, down the road. And indeed there are. A couple of years later, there are no complaints on file. We are progressive, we are positive, and we want to make the world a better place. We are too busy getting on with things to worry about wasting our time with complaints. If we look more closely at hand in Bunbury, we were in Stone Street before now, in a very unusual location, opposite some very unusual residents who work largely at night. And where we are right now, next door to where we are, is what's euphemistically called the Bikey Club. There are no complaints on file. We're very happy with what we're doing. And so it is time to move on, ladies and gentlemen. And as we look at the new facility that we propose, we're focusing on three things for people with neurological conditions in MS. Many of them struggle from neuro optic neuritis, which leads to loss of eyesight and blindness, cognitive impairment, and also physical disability. The reason I share those things with you is because within our 40 units spread throughout Australia, throughout Western Australia, none of our 40 residents can drive a motor car. Within the exact same facility that we are looking to build here in Bunbury, across all our locations in Western Australia, the highest percentage of people that drives a car of all our, our participants is 39% and the lowest is about 28%. So let's assume our margin for error is a long way away. Let's assume that, for reasons that we cannot fathom, 50% of the residents proposed for our new facility choose to drive their motor car, and 100% of our 15 staff choose to do likewise. We would still have enough car parking bays and bays to spare. So, Mr Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, councillors, um, I'm looking forward to building this facility with you so that we can actually make Bunbury a place for people living here and their families and we can tell our grandchildren that we were proudly a part of that process. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, Claire Richards. Thanks, Claire. Uh, good evening. My name's Claire Richards. I'm from Row Group. We are town planners for the MS Society. Uh, there are three issues I would like to touch upon if time permits. These are parking, environmental emissions and suitability of use. Firstly, in relation to parking, uh, there is no prescribed parking ratio under Town Planning Scheme Number 7 for the use class community purpose, and therefore the number of parking bays required for this proposed development is at the discretion of Council. A total of 27 bays are proposed on site, along with a separate designated drop-off and pick-up area and overflow parking 
accommodating up to a further 16 vehicles. So in total we have 43 uh, bays available on site should they be required. As Marcus has explained, the reality of the situation, unfortunately, is that a significant number of the patients attending the proposed facility are not able to drive. And therefore, they either rely on their friends and their family to drop them off and pick them up, they rely on private taxis, often shared, or they have private bus transportation organised through the society or through their residential care provider. As a result, the likelihood of all 43 parking bays required on site at any one time is very low. The Society's experience, as Mark has touched upon, at their other facilities suggests that the number of patients driving themselves to the proposed facility is around 30%. This means that of the number of patients proposed to be accommodated at the site, which is 45, only 13 or 14 may actually drive themselves to the facility. It is also documented in our application that once or twice a year, the MS Society holds a forum wherein 60 or 70 people may be invited. This is a maximum number of people, and in reality, the number of people who actually attend is closer to 40 or 50. Many of these, as I have previously mentioned, don't drive themselves to the centre, meaning that the actual demand for parking is significantly less than 60 bays. Given the nature of the proposed development, it's our view that the provision of 27 bays on site and 16 overflow bays is suitable to accommodate actual demand. One thing I would like to touch upon uh, is conditions 10A and 10B of the alternate recommendation. Uh, they require, firstly, the construction of on-street bays and, secondly, the payment of a financial contribution for the construction of 17 public bays. Uh, for the reasons I've explained regarding the nature of the proposed development and the travel habits of the patients, it is very unlikely that all of the 43 bays on site will actually be occupied at any one time. As such, the requirement for the MS Society to construct these on-street bays and provide a financial contribution to public parking is, in our view, an un unnecessary impost and, unfortunately, one which could render the project unviable. Although we, we appreciate that this is not a planning concern, as a not-for-profit organisation, the MS Society does have a finite budget and it must use its budget wisely in order to provide the services that the community of Bunbury require. For these reasons, we would ask elected members to support the proposed development by voting for the alternate recommendation, but by deleting proposed conditions 10A and 10B. Uh, I wanted to briefly touch on environmental emissions, but time's getting away from me, so I, I won't. I'll move to my final point, which is the suitability of the proposed use in the industry zone. <clears throat> the Council report suggests that the proposed development would be better suited in the city centre, mixed business or shopping centre zones. The suitability of the proposed development is required to be considered in the context of a particular site. Whether or not an alternate site is more or less suitable in terms of its location is not a matter that should be considered in determining the application. The proposed development is, is fairly unique in the sense that it doesn't rely on other services, facilities or land uses in the same way as perhaps a medical centre or an office or a shop. This is because it doesn't rely on passing trade or the services offered by other businesses and it has a very specific client base. The proposed facility has been designed as a one-stop facility for patients where they can access a range of important services in one location. On this basis, patients are not disadvantaged by the proposed facility being located in the industry zone. Uh, just in conclusion, uh, it is our view that the merits of this particular application warrant the approval of the proposed discretionary use. And on this basis, we respectfully seek Council's support for the application subject to the deletion of conditions 10A and 10B in the alternate recommendation. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Councillors, we have um, two recommendations before us. Um, we've heard from the presenters. Is there someone prepared to move something? Councillor Hayward, what I'm are you prepared to, to move? i move the alternate recommendation. In, in whole, yep. Councillor Cook. Seconded. I have a question about 10, but in terms of moving, I'm happy to move at this point. Yeah, you'll move, you'll move it and you're seconding. Not, okay, so someone, Councillor Kelly, thank you. Uh, you have a question, Councillor Hogan? I do. I'm just wondering if, uh, if our, we could have a comment about, thank you. Just wondering if we could have a, a comment in relation to uh, 
what's been put to us about the parking and uh, what our officers' views are, given that what we've heard tonight. Yeah, I'm happy to uh, listen to officers' uh, comments, uh, Councillor Hayward. I think, as elected members, we should also hear what the presenters have said to us about the, the demand for parking as well. But, uh, Mr CEO, do you have a comment to make in response to the request to delete 10A and B? Yeah, Director of Planning, thanks. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Mayor. Having heard the uh, presentations, I'm uh, sufficiently um, comfortable with the removal of 10A and 10B. Um, as we've heard tonight, the rationale provided around the, the nature of the occupancy and the, um, the, the clients, if you, I guess, um, that information I would take on board as part of the application. Um, but I'd also like to say that if indeed, once the uh, facility is fully operating, that I'd like to think that the proponent would um, be amenable to addressing some of the on-street car parking issues if, there, if it was, or a short, shortfall of um, car parking bays. Okay. So, uh, Councillor Hayward, do you want to amend your... I do. I'd just like to remove 10 A and 10 B. 10 A and B. And, Councillor Cook, do you consent to that? Uh, yes, happy to, but I think it only needs to remove 5 and 10. Yep, yep. Uh, there, I'll be cross it. Yeah, you did. I beg your pardon, Councillor Kelly, you did too. Are you, do you consent to that? Uh, yes, <laughs> Well, we'll test the meeting. Go ahead. Um, the three, and I did it to the Minister Secretary, is merely uh, this decision be conveyed to the Department of Health, Work Safe, and the Department of Environment and Regulation. Councillor Howard, do you consent to that being included in your initial I motion? certainly do. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Councillor Howard, do you wish to speak to this? No. Councillor Kelly? Um, just briefly, Mr Mayor, to say thank you very much for the EMS Society for uh, uh, that uh, presentation. Um, what particularly pleases me is that the EMS Society are taking responsibility for their decision to locate where they're wanting to locate. It's too often, uh, I think, we can be said that um, uh, people look at a place and say, well, we'll just wander into there and, and leave it at that. But it was clear from that presentation that they're their hand up and say they know where they're going and know what they're doing, and even though this is not a conventional um, area for this particular type of um, organisation, they have um, uh, quite well demonstrated to me that they're serious about what they're going into, uh, and that that is a, uh, a reason to support this man. Thank you. Is there a speaker against? I'll put it all in favour. Those against? Two against, that's carried. Uh, Councillor Jones and Councillor Prosser record their names against. Uh, the rest are for. So that's the, that's the decision of Council. Uh, can we just, Councillor, so would you mind asking Councillor McCreary to come back in? Councillor Giles, thanks. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and councillors and staff. Um, Council, would you mind just sticking around? We've just got a couple of confidential items to uh, discuss with you. Uh, this meeting is closed at 6.08pm. Thank you very much. <laughs>